G'day guys, Scott Maz from Alua Fishing Oz. So I said in my introduction video that uh, hopefully I'd be able to sneak over and do a bit of freshwater fishing and uh, put together some stuff on trout and cod. Now I'll be honest, I managed to get the footage done for all of the trout stuff only to find that uh, part of the sound on my chest camera wasn't working so I lost a lot of the sound. So I've been working furiously at editing it and trying to fix it up. Um, in the meantime, I, I got a phone call and, a, and uh, an offer to go over for a run up to the mountains again to chase some cod, and it was one I just wasn't going to resist, so I managed to get there earlier than I expected. And let's just say it was a, a memorable trip. Uh, you would have seen the thumbnail so far, and you've got a hint at what's to come. So what I want to talk about today is, is that trip over there and the method we used to catch that fish. Um, a little bit about the trip itself and, and the, uh, the environment we're in and the tips that we can put together and learn from that are going to, uh, to enhance your ability to catch fish and, and hopefully get you that fish of a lifetime as well. So a couple of quick sections. Um, first part, I want to uh, introduce you to a couple of lures from, from one of the fellas I met when I was up there. He's been a mate of the guys I was with, um, a fella called Wayne Dubois. Um, Wayne, also known as Mr. Freshwater, owns a company called Insanity Tackle. You'll find them on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, to say he helped us out uh, immensely is an understatement. Um, I'll explain when I get to the hook sizes what actually went on, but uh, Wayne and I managed to jump on the boat and do a very, very quick session on some reddies. So we put a very quick tip uh, video together on how to catch redfin, and particularly uh, the pros and cons of using ice jigs and vibes. Um, and we had a long conversation about, you know, the, the dams themselves and, and blowering and barrenjuk and tantanga and those sorts of things and the sorts of fish you'll find up that way. Um, and he, uh, he introduced me to a whole stack of his lures. So these are not paid ads, remember? I don't do paid ads. Um, I do pay for, for lures. So I did make sure I, uh, I gave him some money and I've got to be honest, he was more than generous. Um, in, in sending some stuff down. There's some stuff there that we're gonna give a real shot to on the on the flathead and see if we can chase some dewies and take some of that freshwater techniques and then bring them down to the salt water the same way as we take the salt water techniques to the fresh water. Um, so he sent me out uh, some that I really find very interesting. I, I'm sure they're gonna go really good on cod and yellow belly and that sort of stuff. Um, he's got some big swim baits he sent down and uh, glide baits. So a couple of trout patterns in the swim baits, got the rainbow and the and the brown trout. And, um, what have we got here? Oh yeah, uh, some big blades, yabby blades, very similar to the PXs that come out from, um, God, I can't think of it now, Berkeley. Um, we got a little sinking minnow. I, I was throwing one of those around, fantastic little lure. Group casts like a bullet. I'm sure that's gonna catch plenty of fish, particularly brim and flathead down here on the coast. Um, Almost a direct lick, we've got a little PX actually, the, the little vibe. Uh, we've got some slap walkers, which I'm sure are gonna go well. They might even pick up a couple of um, a couple of snapper too, so we'll give them a run. Um, another little soft vibe. I have absolutely no doubt that that's gonna be a cracking little vibe. Once again, your Trevally, uh, Brim, Flathead, those sorts of fish, no dramas in the world, obviously as well as the red fin and the occasional trout. Um, and we got a little mumbler, tiny little mumbler. So I'll, uh, I'll give those a run, they're very, very good. Um, and I should give a quick shout out too, for, there's a group of young fellas who live out Buru away, and uh, they've started doing their own spinner baits. They make them all um, over in Burua. They sell through a couple of the local tackle stores over that way. Um, I believe they've got an Instagram page uh, they've sent me, I purchased uh, four spinner baits off them and they look quite good quality, they look like they're pretty solid. Um, hook sizes are nice and and uh, good size wire and nice little jig head. Uh, I think they're going to go alright on the bass, once again they'll uh, they'll pull yellow belly and they'll pull cod and everything else as well. Um, so we're going to take those down to Brogo and give those a bit of a shot down this way as well. So they sent me a few different colours. So I'm, I'm sure they'll uh, they'll go well. So that's the guys, the young fellas from uh, from JBH Spinner Baits. So uh, give them a, a look out for uh, for Spinner Baits if you're that way inclined, guys. Very reasonably priced, and um, you know they were lovely kid, lovely young fella to uh, to deal with. 
Righto, so let's get back to the fish. So rather than delve too far into the conversation before we show you the action, let's go over to the net. We're just about to uh, get into some cod fishing today. We've snuck up to uh, to Blaring Dam. We're going to go and chase some meter. He's got a fella who's a gun angler, young Nathan Foley from out around Holbrook Way, who's, uh, mate, I'll tell you what, he's had more buddy meter cod than I've had at dinners, I think. Um, he certainly uh, knows his way around the cod and, the, and this place for sure. We've got uh, one from Insanity down here. He's, uh, we just came down for fish and it turns out he was already here. And uh, my mate Pumba's come up to join me as well. So we're going to try and chase a few cod. We're going to do it a couple of different ways. We're going to try and chase them on the soft plastics. We're going to get some mumblers out and drag them around the lake a little bit. We're going to do some casting into the snags. And we're going to chase them on both Barty's and on chicken. And uh, they reckon chicken is obviously the, the gun choice at night. So we're going to give them a bit of a shot with that. So stay tuned and uh, hopefully we'll bring you some big fish and some, some good tips on how to catch them. Goody Alright guys, it's, uh, it's been a few hours, I've got to be honest, it's, uh, we're into the second night, it's only early, we're just having a chat about when the fish should hopefully be coming on, um, and we're sitting there and the boys heard a bell jingle, and of course the thing's taken off, now hooked up to a, uh, a pretty substantial cod, she's got some weight to her. It's coming in a bit, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. A little bit earlier we were sitting there and we watched a cod getting up around the magic meter mark, just swimming really, really close to the bank. Oh, look at this, nice fish. Yeah, so we're rigged up with a, a Tenno circle hook and we've got a, um, I've got a, just a running ball rig, like the simple rig that I showed you before. Yeah, and a so giant piece is too big for the net. So just a running sinker. I was going to keep the pressure on while Nathan brings it up for us. And look at and this. And this is, this is fish and gold, guys. And this is your, <laughs> and this is your PB. Thank you, PB, God. This is awesome. Can't help but swear when you see a fish like this, guys. I tell you what, this is just magic. This is sensational. Yeah, yeah, right. well, buddy, and it. she's. Oh, she's absolutely she's beautiful. She's huge. She's I good. can't swear. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. The... Yep. There's a, right. um, a lip grip attached to the front of my, or the top of my bag at the end of my uh, swag, dude. Right, mate. We've been very careful about the way we grab her. Because she's so big. We... She's already cut me up again. Right, uh, one point. One point, one hundred and eleven. Yep, hundred and eleven. Hundred and eleven on the nose. Your PB, mate. Yes, well thank you very done. much, mate. That's all good, Maz. All right. Well, well, swimmer. We'll get a couple of quick picks. Uh, I've got a photo. Uh, I think you can swim, you can't even pick her up. There we go. Just give her a grab. Oh, she's give a beauty, her a mate. Oh, Absolutely. Beauty. Beauty. I'll tell you what, guys. There's not many more feelings like this. This is awesome. Like well that. done, Nathan. Thanks, Pumba. Definitely a fish of a lifetime, eh? Let's get it back in the water. If I can get up off the ground here. All right. Uh, right, guys. We're going to put her back now. Take her in and give her a swim. You got uh, on, mate. Oh, gee, she's heavy. I wouldn't even like to try and guess how big that fish was. Ah, got me thumb. <laughs> Come here, beautiful girl. Here you go. There we go. There she goes. Beautiful. Oh. Swimming off like a champion. Thank you, Foley. <laughs> Good work. Thanks, man. Thank you, Rob. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jeez. The All right, guys. Now, um, as you can appreciate, I got a little bit excited there and I, uh, I couldn't help but swearing. So um, hopefully I've managed to figure out how to beat those words out. Um, so that makes it a little bit more child friendly if you uh, you happen to want to show that to the kids But you can see it she was a big fish, you know look to be brutally frank um, It was hundred and eleven centimeters 
Um, and, you know, they do get a lot bigger than that. I think the, the, the biggest I'd heard of coming out this season so far is nearly 130 or up around 130. So you can imagine if that fish of mine was 111, what a 130 or, or even a 120 looks like. Uh, absolute monsters, you know. Big fish, great fun to catch. So let's have a look at what we actually did to catch the fish. Now, there's a few, uh, there's a few things that didn't work. Let's start off with a few of the things that didn't work. The first one that didn't work was I was throwing some of those big, my big soft baits. I was throwing them on an 11 foot rod, uh, getting them right out there, punching them through the water. Couldn't get a hit on that. Uh, I threw some big mumblers for a little while. We did a bit of trolling with mumblers and um, some big soft baits. No good at all. Didn't, uh, didn't have a hit. You know, lost a couple of lures, but nothing, nothing too big. But uh, it was it was pretty slow going. Um, the most of the action was actually occurring on the beach. So we uh, we set the rods up in the rod holders. Uh, before we go too far down the track, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to make sure if you're going to go to any of these inland dams and you're going to set up a rod, you want to take a bloody good rod holder with you. And those PVC ones, no good. Don't take a PVC one. You try and bash a PVC one into that hard shaley clay stuff around the outside edge, it's not going to work. You're going to shatter the thing. Throw it over your left shoulder and go and buy a new one. Um, you don't want to have anything that's got, you know, maybe just a single rod if you can avoid it. Uh, ideally, you want something that's got a little bit of steel angle iron and then a steel tube, something you can really give a bit of a whack to, something that's going to get great bite in the ground and not going to move. Um, next thing you do, when you set that up, you've got to make sure that you set it up on the right angle. It was a very interesting conversation I had with young Nathan about uh, the angle of your rod, and, and I couldn't help but uh, to agree with him. Um, I've got my um, one of my little power sticks. It's a little power stick from from uh, Complete Angler. It's just basically a miniature ugly stick sort of thing. Very, very powerful little rod. Quite funny. It's um, It's got a lot of strength to it. Now, I'm going to use it to do a bit of demonstrating for you. So the first thing is this. Never set your rod like that. Okay, you don't want to set your rod like that for a number of different reasons. But one of them is it doesn't matter what the action of the rod is. Unless it's incredibly slow action rod, the reality is your rod's not going to do what you want it to do. Okay, and you're going to put it under a lot of strain, particularly if a big fish comes and grabs it and you've got too much drag on there, okay? And you're likely to snap a rod. Um, next one is it's going to pull the bait back too quick. All right? Um, I'm going to talk about the hook sizes, and it's really important that you make sure you don't set a hook too quick. So what you want to do is you want to have the rod set on an angle so that the rod is going to work most effectively and efficiently. And you want it just to take up the strain quite slowly. So one of the things you need to do, set your rod holder somewhere in that, you know, somewhere around about 25, 30 degrees up to around about 35, 40 degrees. I wouldn't go 45, that's starting to get a little bit too upright. So down around that sort of 30, 35 degrees is where you want to be. Next thing you want to do is you don't want to go there without a set of bells. Right, eh? Unless you're going to sit there and watch your rod for hours and hours on end, you want a set of bells, okay? So grab yourself a set of bells, just clip them on the top there like that. Now I apologize in that video, you'll notice I didn't clip them off. I wasn't going to stuff around worrying about trying to unclip the bells in order to get the footage. What I was doing is concentrating on catching that fish. So, let's take a set of bells with you, one for each rod. Okay, next, the type of rod you're going to use. Now, <clears throat> the type of rod, and this is going to sound really silly, the type of rod actually has to go with the type of hook and rig setup you're using. Now, if you're using a J hook, you know, something like an O'Shaughnessy, um, so it's relatively straight. Wouldn't you know it, I'm trying to find one and I thought I had one here sitting there ready to go but I've obviously moved it out of my way. So if you go with a, a hook that's relatively straight, we'll just steal this one for a moment as an example. That's relatively straight and it has a hook on it. It's great for body grubs and things like that. The problem with these sorts of hooks is that those sorts of hooks generally, if they get swallowed, will gut hook a fish. Now we don't want to gut hook fish, righto? Last thing we want to do is do damage to a fish. Um, next one, if you've got a gut hook fish and it puts enough pressure on there, that hook can pull out, okay? And yeah, if it's got its mouth closed, it will probably only go as far as the edge of its mouth, then you might hook back into the outside edge of its mouth. But they're not the best hooks all round, okay? The best hooks, oh, there we go, that's the one I was looking for. That's the hook I was using for catching, for baiting with a bardie grub. Unusually, we had no joy with the bardies. So... 
what we needed was a different approach and what we were using was a circle hook. Now, you don't want a circle hook on a very fast action rod if you can avoid it. All right? Unless you're going to have your drag right off and let the fish swim away with it and then set your hook slowly, you don't want a graphite rod, right? Or you certainly don't want a fast action rod. You want a really slow action rod, okay? You want something that's going to have, let the fish pick up the bait and swim away nice and slowly and just pick up the slack, just like that. And then when the fish gets to a certain point, this hook will start to pull back out of the fish's mouth and generally get caught somewhere around the outside edge. Now, here's where you've got to look at the anatomy of the fish. You look at that hook there, that's, you know, that's a reasonable size hook. That's a six o, that's an 8 o hook, right? That's an 8 o circle hook. And I'll put it down on here so you can see it. Now that 8 o hook, circle hook, in most instances, is going to catch your fish, except with big jewies and big cod. Because the reality is they've got this big, round, bulbous lip and they've got big, um, plates in the side of their mouth that are very very strong all right now those plates are so wide that you can't get that space to go around either side of it you need a bigger hook so we went to uh, a couple of different places in tumut biggest we could get was a um, was an 8 and it turns out that each fish we were hooking up they were popping out of their mouth they were literally just popping the baits um, and we couldn't hook up. What we had to do was get some 10 O's. So we were really lucky when we got down to that spot at Blowering, we were kind of at a loss of what to do. We got into a conversation with Wayne and, and it just so happened that he had uh, a few extras that he could spare for us and he gave us a, um, a packet of, uh, of 10 O octopus circle hooks. Now, these circle hooks are fantastic, okay? And you'll notice one of the first things and the features about this, it's got a nice wide gape in here, okay? The distance between the two is very, very wide. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is it's got a nice set to it. So it's got a bit of a twist to it like that. Now, this hook sets beautifully and it sets by itself, okay? So a soft rod, a little bit of drag, you don't want too much drag, you don't want it solid as a rock, you don't want the fish pulling your rod holder over, you don't want it snapping your rod. Just enough drag that you're going to be able to set the hook um, and not too loose that it's not going to set. So for me, I reckon that's somewhere in that, you know, three to four kilos of drag, somewhere around that sort of mark. Um, you really don't want to be less than a, a kilo or two of drag. And you really don't want to be too much more than that, depending on the line size you're using and your reel and your drag settings and all that sort of stuff. So somewhere in that, you know, three kilos of drag should be about right. Now, the rig. Well, anybody who's watched the basic rigs video knows the rig, okay? The rig is incredibly straightforward. It is simply the hook with a leader down to a swivel and then a sinker. Now the sinkers, were number threes and number fours, okay? So it was a number three and a number four bean sinker. So let's hold them up down there for you to see. That's the little number three in the bean, and that's the number four. Basically, it's about the same size that way, but when you look at them side on, okay, the number four is a little bit wider. Bean sinkers are fantastic. You cast them out, they'll sit down flat like that. They won't tend to roll. Now, it's not like there was a lot of current gonna be in the dam anyway, but bean sinker. Next. The length of your leader. Now, you do not want your sinker to be right down hard up close to your bait. You really want it to be in that sort of 75 centimeter range, maybe a meter, but around that 75 to a meter range. It's almost, if anybody's, a, if you guys are saltwater fishermen, it's pretty much similar to the sort of rig that we would use for, um, if we're using a running ball rig, down for jewies or for sharks, that sort of thing. Um, it's, it almost exactly the same. I mean, in fact, the rod that I took, the gear that I took with me was my Dewey gear, okay? So, running ball, straight to a swivel, swivel, straight to the hook, off and running. Now, the bait, and here's the thing. We were using chicken, okay? Um, some people use uh, bardies, some people use cheese, uh, we were using chicken. Now, there's a theory here that goes like this. There's two things that like munching on the chicken. The first one is the yabbies and the lobbies. 
Yabbies and lobbies will eat the chicken that you chew it up to get rid of it. The, um, the idea is that the yabby or the lobbies come over, they're chewing on it to get rid of it. Remember, they are vegetarian, but their job is to clean the waterways out. So they chew on it, munch on it, do that. And the cod comes along and is actually trying to eat the yabby or the lobby that's on there. All right. The other alternative is it comes along and goes, yep, I'm going to eat that and just sucks it straight in and takes it. Both could be right, I don't know, I don't care. All I care about is making sure that my presentation is correct. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought. Some guys like to use a square sort of a chunk down the bottom. Personally, um, I liked the idea of rigging this exactly the same way as I would um, a piece of squid or a fillet for a, uh, for a dewy. So what I did, was I just got a little bit of chicken breast or chicken thigh. Now I actually caught that fish on chicken thigh fillet, just a boned chicken thigh fillet. And I cut it into a little slit where I had a piece of bait that was about two and a half to three inches long. So about in that 65 to 75 millimeter range long. It was about two and a half centimeters wide and about a centimeter and a half deep. So about an inch by half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And what I did was I simply hooked in through the, the piece of chicken and I left this hook so that it was completely exposed from the chicken. Then I came up the line and I put one half, twitch, half twist and another half twist. Okay, so just half hitch one side. So all you do when you half hitch is you just take a bit of line, take a bit of line like that, turn it around, put the chicken through there like that, Pull on it, Oop, it's just came out. Pull on it like that so it catches it. Put another twist in it and then do it again. Okay, now that meant that the chicken was actually held on by the line and was secured by the line and the hook was just sitting there exposed. Okay, um, now to give you an idea how productive that was, we actually hooked uh, two more fish after that. Um, the problem was that by that stage it was uh, very very late at night and we were just say a little bit uh, under the weather and, and we didn't manage to make it to the rods so the rods were bent over we'd lost the fish one of those things that happens but that's the rig circle hook nice and big something like a 10 -0, maybe even an 11 -0. I certainly wouldn't be going down around that 7.0 size, 6.0 size. You're not going to get really big monster fish on those little hooks. Um, steer clear of the O'Shaughnessy sort of patterns and your straighter patterns. You know, once again, as I say, they, you are going to be able to gut hook fish if you're doing that. These things will tend to lip hook or um, hook somewhere in the side of the jaw. You're going to be able to release the fish in better condition and uh, make sure you stick to those rules. Get your angle of your rod right. Make sure you've got the right drag and you'll be off and running. Now you're going to go over and hit Burrenjuck or any one of those sort of dams that have, you know that have got cod in them and uh, I'm sure you'll find some success by fishing the fringes. Um, particularly if you can find a fringe that's got some grass on it, something around the back edge of a, uh, of a deeper section where the fish are going to move up and then go around and start patrolling looking for those little spiny lobsters and crays and that sort of stuff. So give that a shot guys, good luck and uh, I hope you catch some more fish. Thanks.